The problem is, is that I don't know how you assist feed an anaconda. Oh, there we go, there we go. It's getting in there now. Perfect. Good morning everybody, welcome to the vlog. It is absolutely a blue sky out here, but for those of you that live in a warm climate and wonder what it's like to be in a snowy area like Michigan, now you know. I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing. And I am back here at BHB, and today, Verde, my green anaconda, gets one last shot to try to eat. You guys know I've been trying to get her to feed, and she hasn't, and she's starting to lose weight. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna try tuna scenting and see if she'll take that, because anacondas really like fish. If she doesn't eat today, I have no choice but to assist feed her. So I will show you guys how I assist feed her, why I assist feed her, and just take you guys through the process, and hopefully it will work out. Again, I will explain exactly what I'm doing as it goes, but let's hope she eats before we get started on that, I did want to tell you that this Sunday, myself, Chewy, and Noah are going to be at the Scott Smith All Animal Expo at Wheaton, Illinois, which is right outside of Chicago. So if you guys are in the area, please come pay us a visit. It will be a lot of fun, and the rumor is, is that Chewy is actually dressing up as Santa Claus. So you can come bring your kids and see Chewy Claus if you want to. It will be a lot of fun. So anyways, come see us if you get a chance. But for now, let's go ahead and see if Verde, my anaconda, will eat. Okay, so Jessica actually brought up a great point. Point, which was to use sardines instead of tuna. We have tuna and we have sardines, but I can tell you what, these sardines are pretty strong smell-wise. So she's definitely right about that because the whole idea is to try to give Verde something that it would really want to eat. And again, anacondas in the wild eat fish a lot. As a matter of fact, there's probably a large part of their diet, believe it or not, which a lot of people would be pretty surprised about. But you gotta remember that anacondas basically live in or around the water all the time. So certainly fish are abundant down there and they're gonna catch them a lot. What I'm gonna do is take this rodent right here, which is a little rat, I'm gonna basically just smudge these sardines all over it so that the smell of the sardine is all over this rat's head. And guys, I understand that it's kind of weird to think about taking a frozen rodent and be smashing it into a thing of sardines, but you gotta do whatever you gotta do so that your snakes eat. So uh, let's hope that Verde takes this because if Verde doesn't take it, I have no choice but to try to assist feed it. And then of course, I'll tell you why I'm assist feeding it and why it could potentially benefit it. But first, we're gonna hope that Verde takes this one. So fingers crossed. Hey Verde, come on. Do you want this maybe? Do you want this? Come on Verde. Come on girl. Oh. Oh. So that was a disappointment. I really had high hopes that the sardine scent would work and it just didn't, unfortunately. She just doesn't seem to have any response to it whatsoever. And there's even a little bit of teasing that I did. It's something that, a technique that's called tease feeding, which you almost make them a little bit upset and then they go, oh, I'm gonna strike this and I'm gonna coil it and I'm gonna eat it. And she just has no response. She's just such a sweetheart. She doesn't seem to do anything other than just sit there and be awesome. Oh, little beard egg. I think that I have no choice but to assist feed her now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thaw out a rodent that is about the size of her head, and then I'm gonna slowly try to work it into her mouth, and then hopefully she'll take it down. With that said, I've never assist fed an anaconda. I have no idea how she's gonna take it or anything like that, but I need to get some food into her because the whole idea behind assist feeding is that once that food is in them, maybe that kind of sparks their appetite and gets their digestive system going, and once they get a meal into them, bam, they're gonna spark off and start eating. Fingers crossed, I'm gonna go ahead and thaw out a rodent, and we're gonna see if this works. So here's the deal. You wanna start with something that's about the size of their head or smaller, that way when you put it in their mouth, they can't spit it out. And the hopes are, once it's in their mouth, they will eventually take it down by themselves. The problem is, is that again, I don't know how you assist feed an anaconda. They have pretty powerful jaws. I do a lot of ball pythons, but they are pretty easy about opening their mouths. I don't know how an anaconda is gonna do and I don't want to stress her out so that's the kind of dilemma right you don't want to do something that's gonna cause them to stress out because a stressed out animal won't eat but yet you don't want them to not eat and lose weight it's kind of one of those things where you're just gambling to be honest with you but uh, I feel like at this point because she has been losing some weight she certainly still looks really good but I'm just at that point where I'm like let's try to see if we can get her going so what I'm gonna do is really gently get her behind the head don't stress out, little girl, I love you. Oh. And I'm gonna see if I can't get her to open her mouth with this fuzzy right here. Ah, oh, there we go, there we go. It's getting in there now. Perfect. Oh, ow, 
Ooh, she's got sharp teeth. I'm just gonna kind of push that down a little bit. Oh, and, and again, what I'll always say is that you want to make sure that you have it in there far enough to where it can't get spit out. Because if she can spit it out, then I'm in trouble. So, okay, okay. I'm gonna leave her like this. Oh, and I hope that she'll take it down. Let's go ahead and set her down and see what happens. Come on, Verde. So she keeps spitting it out, so I think I'm just gonna hold her and just see if maybe she'll take it down if I'm holding her. This is about the best it's been so far. Come on, girl, you need to take it down, sweetheart. Ideally, I always set them down because it's definitely usually the best thing to do, but it seems like every time I set her down, she just spits it out, so maybe if I hold her, she'll eventually wanna eat it. She's basically just trying to figure out what to do. She's never eaten, she doesn't have the experience, so she's got this thing in her mouth and she's not sure exactly what to do. Hopefully, her instincts kick in and she starts to do the whole kind of but I'm not sure what's gonna happen. All right, so guys, it's been a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and set her down again, and hopefully this time she'll take it. Okay guys, so that was really an unusual thing. Like, I mean, she did eventually get it down, but she didn't do the normal kind of snaky thing that you would normally see with another type of snake. But uh, she seemed to somehow just kind of work it down. Again, that kind of goes back to that kind of inexperience of feeding. I'm not really sure. I mean, I gotta say it was a success because she did get a meal down, but it was a really weird thing. So let's hope that that kind of improves on time. I don't really know where to take it from here. I'm gonna go ahead and offer food again in another four or five days and hopefully she'll take it because assist feeding like this is kind of weird. I honestly don't know what it would normally be like, but that was definitely the most unusual assist feeding ever. But hey, if nothing else, she has a meal in her and hopefully that's a good thing. Okay, guess what? Jessica brought me a present. Oh my gosh, Christmas came early. So uh, I have no idea. It's light, I know that. And I'm gonna be a little more gentle with this because normally I just rip things apart. So uh, yeah, thank you, gentle. Jessica. <laughs> Be gentle. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what can this be? Okay, here we go guys Priority mail I'm excited <laughs> What did I get? Oh my gosh, you guys, you guys are not gonna believe this. This is so awesome. Take a look at this. Oh my gosh. These are all of the Dalmatian geckos that, remember when she sold my gecko? Remember I had this favorite gecko that I loved and guess what happened? I was in Florida and these two these two conspired and they sold my gecko. Jessica, you found all the Dalmatians. Yeah, oh my gosh. That one's really cool. Oh. It's got light spots on it. <laughs> okay, so this was a brilliant idea, Jessica. This was absolutely I amazing. I told you it wasn't going to be all like crazy or anything. <laughs> this is awesome. And I tell you what, guys, this one really is a lot like my Dalmatian gecko. Uh, and so is this one. Take a look at that right there. Oh my gosh. And even this one. You did a good job, Jessica, of finding them. So I was like, what present could I possibly get? And okay, so now I'm not as upset about losing my Dalmatian gecko. Although I did think that was absolutely amazing. So whoever got it, you got a beautiful gecko. But guess what? I now have four Dalmatian geckos. Are we keeping these ones? We're gonna keep these ones, guys. So anyone that wants to go on the website, do not make an offer for these geckos. They're not for sale. Yeah, I'll go put them on the keeper rack so they won't get in the mix. Awesome. So thank you so much, Jessica. That was absolutely amazing. Jessica, so you have a big responsibility this week because, of yeah. course, Eric usually does a lot of geckos. So you're going to be able to handle it? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty used to doing all this by myself. Yeah. you got to remember, for a long time before Eric, Jessica did do it, which is absolutely insane. But at least now she's not quite as crazy. But I have complete faith in her. So I am going to let you get to work because you've got a lot of cages to clean and feed. 
Yep. Okay, and I'm here if you need me. Lori will help you. You're, you're never gonna help me. You've never helped me before. <laughs> exactly. I, she knows me too well. Before I get out of here, I'm gonna give you a little pep talk. I try not to do these too often because I know some people think it's boring. They're like, just show us some snakes. But the truth is that I wanna talk about some things here. And that is, guys, don't let people drag you down. You know what I mean? It's like, that's just kind of unfortunate human nature. I'm not sure what it's all about, but the fact is that people that don't even know you when you start to get success will try to drag you down. They'll make things up. They'll try to do whatever they can do to do it. And I don't know why they would want to do that. You know, what happens to me all the time, it just recently happened, where there's huge threads about what a terrible person I am and how terrible I care for my animals. The truth is, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't care. I don't care what those people say. They're wasting their breath. It's not going to stop me. It's not going to change my direction. You guys know. The people that support me know that those things aren't true. And I don't have to try to refute what they say about me because I know what's true. And the people that support me will continue to do it. And I want you guys to think the exact same thing about yourself. Don't let people drag you down. Don't let people tell you can't do things that you want to do. You have to believe in yourself and use those people as motivation to push you to the next level, to prove that you aren't what they say you are. Because the fact is, is that it really doesn't matter. They're not going anywhere. They're using their energy to try to drag someone else down rather than using their energy to try to bring themselves up. So just keep pushing people. You can do it. If you have a dream, follow it. Okay, enough said. I'm done with my little rant, my little inspirational speech right there, guys. I hope that you guys don't mind it. All right, to wrap the day up, I actually have a website coming out to do a little bit of a local story. There's this kind of tradition here in the Detroit area in the Great Lakes region. It's called Jobby Nooner, and one day a year, everyone cuts out of work at noon and goes and hangs out on boats. I've never been on it. I don't think I ever will because I'm just not interested in that party scene. Regardless, they have a website, and they kind to interview some people that have local interesting stories. They reached out to me. They're coming. I'm going to show them some snakes. And in the end, I hope the people that go to their website go, that is really awesome. And they learn about snakes. So I'm always looking for ways to reach people. So they are about to be here any minute. I'm going to spend an hour or two with them showing them snakes and showing the love and passion for animals that we all share. And it's going to be a great time. And then I guess I'm going to wrap the day up. But anyways, I'm going to wait for these guys to get here and we're going to have some fun. All right, guys. So I just spent the last few hours hanging out and talking and doing this interview. I apologize about not filming it, but the truth was is that I was just kind of handling snakes and talking about snakes, getting their audience excited about reptiles. I tell you, it was really awesome. I had such a good time. I wish I would have been able to share it all with you guys because it's amazing when you talk to people that are like, oh my God, this is awesome and our audience is going to love this. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. But regardless, I am going to end the vlog here right now. I am definitely on an emotional high right now. So the rest of the evening, is going to be amazing and I hope that the rest of your day, evening, night, morning, whatever it might be is absolutely incredible. You guys mean the world to me. Your support is amazing and I love you so much. Can you do me a couple favors please before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button as well as turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video which is every day, seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to somebody and I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>